Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, people of the Philippines. Good morning, good afternoon, all those who are watching us from other parts of the world. Welcome to the English Vlog, a vlog of English teachers by English teachers and for English teachers. And tonight is a really special night. The first time we're going to have a special guest on the show. It's the season two, episode four, Leadership and Education with Life Coach and Trainer. R.C. Sissiger. She's a certified John Maxwell uh, coach and an education leader as well. We'd like to inform you that at the English blog, we provide customized lesson plan making services, life and career coaching sessions, weekly vlog and blog content related to ESL education. And uh, you can send us a message for all your inquiries at www.englishblog.com. Also be sure to subscribe to our website for exciting offers and updates. We're also social, so please follow us, like our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash English Blog for Teachers. We're on Instagram, the underscore English underscore blog. We also have a LinkedIn profile LinkedIn.com slash company slash the English blog. And it is my privilege and honor to welcome tonight Coach Arcisa Seguera. She's a life coach, trainer, and entrepreneur. And she helps individuals and organizations strengthen their communication and team synergy through a transformative and experiential coaching programs. And for us too, Know her more, here's the first question for Coach RC. So, Coach RC, welcome to the English blog. Please tell us more about yourself and what you do. Hello, everyone. My name is RC Sistigare, and it is such a great privilege to be here. What I do is that I, I teach people to do leadership. Leadership is shifting their mindset and their heart set. And I help people and empower them to communicate their purpose. Apart from, apart from training and developing people, I also manage a school. And uh, the, the name of the school is Green Valley College. And, and I'm also one of the board of trustees of the school. Our school is actually catering the grassroots. So it means we are catering the CDE market here in the Philippines. So it means the, the ROI for us, the greatest ROI, the return of investment for us is really seeing the lives of people transforming. It's really the life transformation. So that's what I do. It's more of purpose. So I, I want to empower uh, people of value to really add value to people as well. Nice. And I've seen that first had when I attended John Maxwell Disc Leadership Training last year in is it south coronadal it's south cotabato south cotabato sorry <laughs> south cotabato so, coronadal Car Car yeah coronadal yeah. is the city right and then it's part of the province south cotabato sorry it was the first time it was my first time being there that's why okay yeah. here's the next question for you coach rc What is a specific leadership challenge you faced and how did you overcome it? What did you learn from it? Among the various leadership um, challenges that I have encountered was when we introduced the ISO 9001-2008 in our organization. Our institution back then was actually a traditional in, in terms of setup. And and we were, we were experiencing resistance from the people in our organization. And it was really heartbreaking because I experienced resistance from, my, from the people who are very close to me. And during that time, I was only 21 years old. I was too vulnerable in receiving criticisms. And, and I was too vulnerable in, in receiving a mass resignation. I handled a mass resignation from the people because they cannot actually handle the, the pressures, the stress 
uh, in, in, in the, the requirement of ISO 9001 2008. So, so um, the, the hardest part was seeing colleagues who, who said goodbye and, and the words they, departing without really doing due process of resignation. So after years of chaotic situations, I learned to stretch my leadership thermostat. It's, it's really about the, the, the core of my leadership. I, I realized that no matter how good is our motive in leading the organization, there will always be resistance. And resist resistance will always be part of the process. And this experience allowed me to enlarge my perspective on leadership. I remember I, I have three lessons. Number one, people are the greatest resource of the organization. So true leaders put people first. That's also what I've learned from John Maxwell. And second is the value of timing. I learned the value of timing when, 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 you know, when the time is actually right and right, right and right, people are, are, are also able to lead themselves in managing transitions. It means they are more ready to receive whatever it is that you're going to implement. It's also good that leaders are not too aggressive. Le true leaders are willing to wait for the right timing until the people are ready to shift. And third, apart from people, timing, and the third one is about culture. To acculturate people cannot be done overnight. And it takes years to develop a culture of excellence across the organization. True leaders are catalysts of positive culture despite of criticisms and resistance. And those are value-adding lessons that I've learned from, from the mass resignation from the people in my organization. Um, those two words, right and ripe, really resonate yeah. with me. It really is such a thing as perfect timing for everything. Thank you for answering that first question. This next one, I believe, is also from me, right? Next question. I think it's me, actually. Oh, is it yours? Okay, sorry. I believe so. Yeah, that's yours. So, Coach RC, I was wondering how can we teach leadership to our students? I teach more children than the other two. And... And I think it's perfect because you have a college. So how do you teach leadership to students and how can you develop like a whole curriculum to make a whole generation of young leaders? You know, I've learned, I've learned to teach the young people by walking with them, being with them and doing an experiential program of leadership with them. So I believe in, I believe that as an educator, one must be very committed to be with them before you can teach them. It's being with them means you are giving so much of heart. It's, it's a heart level type of teaching. So I'm, 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 I'm although I'm all, I also believe in the principle of, of giving conceptual frameworks, theoretical frameworks, but for me, what is more effective is experiential approach. Begin by allowing them to define their values develop clarity, put hope in their reality, align their purpose, and see them creating milestones. So what I do is I always communicate with them. I always talk even outside of the classroom. So training students in terms of leadership is really allowing yourself to, to go through the same experience as well. It means you are, you are, ready to experience what they are experiencing as well. So that's what I do when, 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 I, when I develop leaders. And, and, I, I, and for several years, I have experienced that very effective, that, that method very effective because it is, it is actually more personal. One, it is more personal and it is also relational. And do you have a way to build ex experiential learning into your curriculum? Like, do yes. you, or it's, it's all, yeah, how does it based? How do you do those tasks oh, and get them I, those experiences through a university setting? 
yeah, in, in, in the university setting, we, we actually add leadership programs like seminars, workshop it as part of the curriculum. But apart from that, we go beyond the border. It means apart from us teaching inside of the classroom, I find it very effective to talk to them one on one to talk to them and know them by name, know their families, know their backgrounds, not seeing them as, as a crowd, but seeing them personally, seeing them as individuals with, with individual dreams, desires, hopes. You know, when, when, when people, when the students know that you're familiar with them, you can easily connect it with them from the heart and, and, and they are assured that you are the one guiding them, mentoring them and towards the particular goal that, that they, they want to, to achieve. Thank you, I completely agree. Thank you so much. It is extremely time and labor intensive, but the fruit is, is exactly what you need for the future of the world. <laughs> yes. So it's like for me, the gist of what Coach RC said is leadership is relationship because values are more caught than taught, right? And the next question comes from PJ. Hi, Coach. So I noticed that you talk about declarations. Could you, for those who are unfamiliar with that, could you define and elaborate on what declarations are and why they are important for leadership? You know, declarations are actually products of what we think, of who, what we think, product of what we think of who we are, who we really are. So if you declare something, it, it is actually, it is also manifesting in your ways. So it is, when you declare something, it's, 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 it's showing our perspective, our mindset, and our heart set. So whatever we declare, it becomes our reality. So if you're declaring that you're a person of integrity, it becomes your reality, that you're also a person of integrity. But if you're declaring that you are someone who is negative, someone who is incomplete, then it becomes also your reality. So who, whatever we label ourselves becomes who we are. When we declare God's promises over our lives, we also add hope from God to our reality. So it's actually, it, we are actually reminding everyone to be very careful of what we declare because it will manifest manifest in our manifest in our ways and in also in the results that we are creating so when we declare it is like giving a permission a permission to yeah a permission to about about something about about a reality if you're, you're giving a permission about who you are. So if it's positive, you're also giving a permission. So a permission, so a, uh, you're, you're giving a permission that the positive things will also happen in your life. So if it's also negative, you're also giving a negative permission. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. I said that everybody has their own way of doing declarations. Yeah. What is yours? Mine is a declaration of, of God's word. So what I do, I really practice the principle of a Christian, uh, Christian devotion. So what I do, I declare God's promises every day. So the verse that I'm always declaring is what God says in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And for me, when I'm declaring it, it's also manifesting in all of the ways, in all of my actions, in all of the results that I'm creating in my life. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, PJ. And the next question comes from Christine. Okay, okay. and my question, um, concerns leadership in a time of crisis. Um, as we have been experiencing this pandemic, a lot of people have struggled to navigate this crisis. And um, I think this also applies to leaders. So 
one thing I wanted to ask you was, what are some leadership practices that you recommend for leaders undergoing or navigating a crisis? You know, Christine, uh, John Maxwell defined a crisis as a turning point. Mm -hmm. So once a person is able to navigate a crisis, an adversity can be a, an opportunity. An adversity can be an opportunity. So while crisis reduces the big picture, it is helping the balance of realism and optimism. So there are, I think I, 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 I will only emphasize three points three important practices. Number one is faith over fears. When faith is higher, we become more optimistic. When faith is higher, we see things from a bigger perspective. And we allow the fears to, to be overpowered by our faith. Mm. Second, right. second, feeding our minds, feeding our minds with good things and starving, starving our minds with negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Third, the higher the intensity of crisis, the more we desire to have a wider perspective. So when, when, it is, it, when, 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 when there is this high intensity of crisis, mm -hmm. we become more passionate, we become more passionate to see a larger perspective, a bigger perspective. We, we dream more. We, we stretch ourself, ourselves to become better and better, to create better results. I completely agree with those points. I think those are, are great. Um, I know you mentioned earlier that um, opposition is a reality in leadership and it's an, an inevitable part of leadership. Um, but besides that, there's also crisis and it's inevitable that you're going to face crisis as a leader. Can you talk about a time besides facing opposition that you've been in crisis and how did you handle that and what exactly did you go through? I remember I was mounting a leadership program last year and I handled uh, an, an issue with someone else who, who, kept on, who kept on saying that what's really the purpose of mounting a program? So it's more of someone who is asking question. And, and I actually, that, that experience, in that particular experience, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was, I felt so uncomfortable. It is because that person, that person went to, a government agency and 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 i was i was I, that you know when when he was was when she when that person was talking to me he she was telling a lot about about negative things about really why do you mount a leadership program mm -hmm. and and for me you know what happened i just shifted my perspective instead of me saying that that person is just resisting I, I, I shifted my perspective that maybe that person has this inquiry. It's just an inquiry. So I shifted my perspective. Instead of thinking that that person is resisting, I shifted my perspective that this person is just asking and maybe this person is just asking for an answer. So what, what this person needs is, is an answer for me. And, and as a leader, it is important for me to define the reality and also, and also it is also my accountability to also explain further and to give clarity as well. So what happened, I was able to communicate and I was able to bridge the gap. So during times of crisis or during times of difficulty, communication is so vital. It is important to have this uh, verbal communication and even written communication to, to bridge the gap. So when, 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 when there is an active communication, there, there is a big possibility that, that, that there is a, a solutions will, 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 will come in if, if, if the, the communication process is very active and dynamic. Okay, I agree. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. That's um, something very tough to undergo, and that's a very inspirational story. And I think uh, just before we go to the next question, from crisis to breakthroughs, 
uh, I just want to say that I think it also has a lot of, to do with thought management. If you remember what Coach RC mentioned earlier about affirmations, and here she mentioned about shifting your perspective from maybe initially, perhaps she may be thinking this person is criticizing her uh, on Julie or something like that, but then she shifted to this person must be just really honestly asking and maybe this person really just needs information. And as leaders, we really do have a big responsibility in managing our thoughts because our perspective of things will also determine how we respond to things. So now we go to breakthroughs and PJ has a question on that. Um, so I also noticed that you use the term breakthroughs. So again, I, I actually know what, what this term means, but I think it would be really helpful for um, our, our, um, our audience to know what are they and how do they happen? Are there stages or phases? Is it just like one aha moment? If you could speak to that a little bit, please. Thank you, PJ, for that question. Uh, breakthrough happens when one is able to move from comfort zone to growth zone. It's like breaking the wall. And, and when you have this breakthrough, you know, when, when you are going through this breakthrough, it, it can be very challenging. However, you are actually willing to pay the cost. The breakthrough question that I'm, I'm, I'm the, the breakthrough question that I always uh, share during my trainings program, what are you willing to give up in order to go up? So, so if, you're, if, if you're willing to give up your pride, your ego, your comfort zone, then, then, then you, are, you are actually building or leading to a better version of yourself. So one place to start is, what are you willing to give up to get to your goal? Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a good question to, to our listener as well. What are you willing to give up in order for you to go up? And, and that's, what, that's when breakthrough happens. I just want to um, pivot back to what you said earlier about going from the comfort zone to the growth zone. Is there a zone in between there, the discomfort zone? I feel like we need to go through the discomfort zone before we can get to the comfort zone. What yes. do you think, Coach? Yeah, there is, there is, there is a zone in, in the middle. There is a zone in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, you're, I, I agree with you. This, there is also discomfort, yeah, from, from the comfort Actually, um, some call it like the, it's your casting. It's your casting zone. Yeah, it's your casting zone. And I also agree that you call that discomfort because you are actually not comfortable. It's like you're breaking another wall. You're crossing another bridge. You're going to another pathway. So, so maybe that discomfort is the sign of growth, yes? Would you, would you say that sometimes discomfort is a sign of growth? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. You know, when, when, when you are allowing yourself to go out from your from, from comfort zone to your discomfort zone to the growth zone, you're actually experiencing exponential growth because you're stretching yourself. You're stretching yourself to the next level. You're no longer doing what you used to do. What you, what you were used to, you know, you're, you're, you're no longer doing the things that you are doing before. So you are welcoming yourself, welcoming yourself to another level of growth wherein you are doing new things. You are shifting your paradigm, shifting your heart set. And your, 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 your character is getting better, getting bolder. Gotcha. Thank you, Coach.
And I'm just reminded of an illustration in my head that just popped up. I remember a caterpillar transforming that metamorphosis process from a caterpillar to a butterfly is going out of its comfort zone, right? And it's always been painful. And that's what I'm reminded of when PJ mentioned about uh, discomfort zone. Talking about discomfort zone, we're going back to the current reality, which is about pandemic. And Christine has a timely question on that too. Yes. Um, you have had many leadership roles throughout your adult life, um, from being a member of the Board of Trustees to being a life coach, to being a trainer, a, a teacher. Um, but I'm sure a lot of that, your role and influence as a leader has changed since this pandemic began. But I want to know specifically, how has your role and influence as an academic leader changed since COVID-19? began. Thank you very much, Christine. You know, before the pandemic, I used to be very active in terms of training and empowering people. I am very visible in terms of equipping them. But during times of pandemic, I am more active in my war room. It means before I'm visible in front of people, but during pandemic, the war room here is my prayer room. Before, I, I, am very, I was very visible in terms of talking to them, equipping them, but this time, I am more visible in praying for them. Because I know it's no longer my capacity. It's beyond my capacity. It's no longer what I can share. It's no longer the words that, that I can share that will uplift them. But I know I need a higher source. I need the power of God to intervene. So I am more visible in the war room, praying for the people in my organization, praying that everyone will be safe, praying that God will provide for their needs in the midst of global pandemic. So that's what happened to me. Thank you very much. And um, do you have a, a group with which you, you do your prayers? Um, do you have a community of people with which you you get together and you do your prayers during this pandemic? Yes, Christine, I'm, I'm part of Kamay ng Pag-asa, Hand of Hope. It's a mission team wherein we are praying for the people. We are active in terms of prayer and intercession. Our goal is to pray for different nations. We, 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 we are Currently, we are praying even for OFWs, the Filipino OFWs, so the overseas Filipino workers. Yeah, that's what we do. The heart is really pray to pray for people. It's because we know that the only way for us to be assured is getting the assurance from the source. Very touching. I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Coach RC, for your contagious faith and for your contagious passion for leadership. Uh, I was just wondering, how do you uh, how do you show leadership in the online classroom? Um, I should say that I'm on a call with you now, and I actually feel incredibly led. So there, <laughs> there is a way to engage people, um, but I think it's hard for a lot of colleagues that I have anyway to transition to, to carrying the leadership skills they have in person to online. So do you have any recommendations, whether concrete things you can do, trainings, or just an attitude shift? Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for that question. Uh, whether whether face-to-face -face or virtual, it is important to model the leadership. So modeling and leadership is very important. I, I will only mention two important matters when it comes to teaching leadership online. One is to be on time. Show up, <laughs> show up on time during, during virtual classrooms. It is very important because when you show up on time, that will, sh that will show your integrity, your, your dignity as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a facilitator, as a coach, as a trainer. Second, 
deliver a value adding content. You know, when you're talking online, it can easily be replicated, duplicated. So it's very important to check your content make sure that the content is value adding and make sure that there is that that you incorporate values in your content to make it value adding to the listeners or to the students good and a related follow-up question to that is in leading during a pandemic and leading mm -hmm. virtually have you found any online specific tools that help you lead in a way that you couldn't rather than it being just a detriment i can't lead the way i want to lead have you what are some great things about leading online that are easier to do online than in person yeah one one good thing about this pandemic is we're able to manage uh, different communication platforms so we're, we're using Zoom, we're using other platforms in order for us to teach people. So, so I'm using actually the tool of John Maxwell, the, the, the programs, the, the, the John Maxwell tools in order for me to teach online. But, but I realized that I have a greater reach this time. It, it, it means, it means I, can, I can teach people in, in Canada, I can teach people in Japan, in different areas of the world. By, by using communication platforms. And if you're, if you're asking me about the tools, I'm actually using John Maxwell and the, 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 this, method, the, the, the this method of John Maxwell as well. So it's more of the, the Maxwell programs that I'm using. Great, thank you. Yeah, we're trying to do the same thing and reach a worldwide yes, audience yes. from and, and, and yes, that's Florida what, all the way to the Philippines. Yeah, that's what you do. Actually, I admire what you are doing, and 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 I'm also one of your viewer, one of your viewers. Yeah, the in the your Thank what you, you do is actually, um, it's 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 amazing that you are able to reach educators, and you're actually value you're 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 adding value to to different nations. Thank you so much. That means a lot, RC. So Coach RC, just in case you need any of our services for your college, please let us know. I'm sure that uh, the whole team will be able to assist you on those things. And still talking about uh, pandemic and leadership and working from home, my next question is, what are your recommended ways how to recognize and reward people while working from home? So we're talking about recognition and rewards for teachers yeah I, I i was actually contemplating on what 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 should be my recommended way so i it i can only recommend this virtual yeah virtual recognition using a portal like zoom like zoom zoom session uh, a leader we can actually innovate several ways in recognizing people and, and one of the ways is doing a virtual recognition program. Uh, we've done this by posting, posting some thumbnails about people who are really doing well in terms of their, in their performance, in their, in both in administration and in teaching as well. Yeah. I respect uh, you so much, Coach RC. I, I really think you're, you know, you're, you're gifted and you're exactly you know, you're such a, such a, adding value, add value to so many people's lives. Um, we're so lucky to have you. Uh, I, I just, I'm concerned about people who don't come from a Catholic or a Christian background. Uh, I noticed that, you, you know, you talk about, uh, about deriving your power from God and get God's plan for your life. Um, what I worry about is that people, what about people who come from a sec secular tradition? How are, do you suggest they anchor themselves? Or they don't have that, that kind of relationship with their creator. Yeah, if you, thank you very much, PJ, for, for that question. If you are coming from a secular tradition, and there is no, and you don't have a concept of God, begin to search where you came from. 
This is an inquiry. Begin to search where you came from. Begin to ask. Who gives you the ability to breathe in order for you to exist? Now, I know it's, I don't want to share this by using doctrine. But what is more important here is that I'm able to share that every one of us has a limitation. Each of us has a limitation. And so with our limitation, who fills us during times that we are limited? Who gives us the ability? Who gives us the power and the energy? And there we will be able to recognize that someone higher than us is actually moving. Someone is actually in control. Someone is actually taking over. And there we realize that, that God exists and he's the one taking over. And I still believe, and I always share this to, to people from other, other groups, whether they have a concept of God or not, I always say this, a true leader recognizes his limitations. Therefore, submits to a higher leadership. True leader submits to, a, to the leadership of God. Because um, I'm, I just, you know, I feel that a lot of people who don't, it's, who don't believe in God, it's not that they haven't searched. So I want to respond honestly to what you're saying, and I, I want to be careful about how I say it um, because I, I respect you and I, va I value your opinions and, you know, I respect your judgment. At the same time, I, I, I feel that the people that I know from this community who don't share uh, faith in, in a higher power, they have done that kind of exploration. And so I'm, I'm wondering, because you talk a lot about values, right? You talk a lot about values, but values can come from other places. They don't have to come from a divine source. They can come from ethics, a, a strong belief in morality and what's right and wrong. Um, so I guess I, I was looking more for an alternative route, you know, something else that they could ground themselves in if they've already done that exploration, right? Um, just to give you another example, like my, um, my, I have some pagan friends. It's probably out of your reality, but I have some pagan friends and they get a lot of their values from the way that they see nature work. So, and respecting, you know, talking about growth and evolution, they use nature as a way to, uh, to build themselves, as a guide for themselves too. So, I think that's more of what I was looking for, but it's okay if you don't want to speak to that. Just yes. Thank you, PJ. I, I appreciate as well that you are very respectful, and I see you as I see you as a person coming from. You also have this multicultural perspective that you are also looking at things from a multi-layered perspective. That you understand uh, people from different faith groups. I also, I'm also aware that there are a lot of values and in, not all values are grounded in biblical values. The oral tradition, uh, values coming from oral tradition, values coming from self-help books, from different kinds of principles. But what I'm actually teaching to people is that you ask yourself, where do you ground your values? Where is it grounded? Is it really grounded based on God's truth or coming from the worldview of men? Because if, if it's coming from the worldview of people, then it's also, it, it will always be limited. But if it's coming from God, it will always be absolute. I think Sarah also wanted to share something earlier. Sarah? Yeah, just that... Um... 
Yeah, I see what Coach RC is saying in that leadership is limited. You are limited. And I do think that whether you call it God or something else, a belief in some kind of force or or truth that is constant, that is more powerful and unlimited, can be a great reserve of strength for all leaders, regardless of their faith or their, their culture. Sometimes, it, you know, it's like when people tell you to dig deep. It's that. You need to find what it is that you're tapping into when the going gets real tough and you know that you need to pull something from outside of yourself to make this happen. Thank you, Sarah. I, I guess uh, that's, that's where spiritual breakthrough begins because you're acknowledging that there is a higher source. Christine. I just want to add one last uh, thing. Oh, go sorry, ahead, sorry. Go ahead, Christine. Oh, okay. I was going to say that, you know, I'm asking these kinds of questions for other people. I actually, I believe in the power of prayer and, <laughs> and you know, I, I, I rely on it heavily. So I, I just want us to be able to expand our worldview, you know, in our little microcosm as well. So thank you. Thank you, PJ. Chrissy, do you want to share your thoughts on this too? Sure, absolutely. Um, I do myself have friends from many different faiths and traditions. I have Muslim friends, I have atheist friends, agnostic, Christian, Jewish, you name it. And I think um, lots of them are very strong leaders um, in their own respective fields. And I think they all have that something to tap into, um, including in times of crisis. And that's similar to what Sarah said. And I can personally attest to that because I have friends from all walks of life and from all religious, spiritual beliefs. Um, even if, if they lack a, a spiritual tradition, they have something to tap into. And I think it's just finding that something that, that helps you, um, I guess, maximize your potential as a leader, as a person. So I just wanted to bring that up. And thank you, RC, for sharing. Um, everything that you've been sharing with us. Thank you, Christine. Okay, and I also just wanna weigh in and also share my thoughts on this. Um, Coach RC and I actually share the same faith. I'm also a Christian, and my spirituality for me has changed a lot of the way I, I perceive things and I deal with people in my life. And I also just wanna share with you this definition by uh, PJ and I's favorite book author right now, Renee Brown, this is her definition of spirituality. She says, spirituality is recognizing and celebrating that we are all inextricably connected to each other by a power greater than all of us, that our connection to that power and to one another is grounded in love and compassion. Practicing spirituality brings a sense of perspective meaning and purpose to our lives. So those three things is actually a good way to end tonight's episode, perspective, meaning, and purpose. And what a breath of fresh air um, Coach RC's guesting in our episode really is. So thank you so much, Coach RC. If you want to promote anything for your school, for your advocacy, for John Maxwell and the team, and for your own brand as well, please, this is your moment to share more about that. Thank you very much, uh, P Coach Adrian, PJ, Sarah, and Christine. I really honor, honor you tonight. Uh, morning in your, in, yeah, morning, because it's night in the Philippines. I honor you for who you are, for being so warm. I'd like to invite everyone in, in the program of, of John Maxwell. I'm actually, I'm having a virtual class or online class, uh, this, this method class, and, and I want to invite people of value, people of value to join my class, my virtual class. I, I, want, I want to train people, it is because if I'm training people, I know they can also add value to their organizations and even add value to their nation. So if you wanna join my class, please visit my, 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 my page, RC Sistiger, and I have upcoming class this coming August 29th. 
August 29th. I think we have uh, Coach RC's Facebook page on our slides too, Christine, right? There, so don't forget to please visit and follow Coach RC's Facebook page, facebook.com slash PG slash RC Sistigare. And uh, just going back to the previous slide before this one, we just want to remind you to please visit and subscribe to our website, www.theenglishblog.com. We provide customized lesson plan making services for you and your team. We also provide life and career coaching sessions, weekly vlog and blog content related to ESL education. Send us a message, whether that's on our website, on our Facebook page, and follow us on social media, facebook.com slash English blog for teachers and our Instagram handle, the underscore English underscore blog, and our LinkedIn profile, the English blog. Please do visit and like and follow the social media account. It's been a wonderful evening for us here in the Philippines and to you guys all over the world. We'll see you again in our next vlog episode. Again, my name is Adrian. And I'm Christine. I'm PJ. Sarah. And RC. our special guest, Coach RC. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Please leave your comments in, uh, leave your questions, insights, and what you've learned from this episode in the comment section. We'd love to read those, and uh, we will hope to see you again in our next episode. Stay well, everyone, and keep learning. Bye. Bye. Bye.